Hello everybody. For today's example, I'm just going to briefly show you how you export a graphic from R, either as a PDF or an SVG file, and then how you edit that in either Gravit Designer or Illustrator, and then how you can export from Illustrator um, as a PDF, um, because you want to maintain the vectors. You don't want to export as like a PNG um, unless you're publishing to the web, and then that has to be PNG. So um, if we switch over to our studio, I have all the code here. This is directly from the example page for today. You don't have to write any code today. Um, you just run this. Um, what we're going to do is recreate that same hot dog um, content, hot dog eating contest graphic that we saw with Nathan Yao's book. Um, and we're going to, like your exercise for today is to recreate that with all of the labels um, in Illustrator or Gravit Designer. Um, Illustrator, uh, Gravit Designer is like a free, like a freemium uh, subscription version of Illustrator. It's a vector editor. Um, Illustrator is kind of the industry standard vector editor. It is expensive, but as a GSU student, you get it for free. So um, it might be worth downloading it. Um, you actually have access to the entire Adobe Creative Cloud, so you can play with um, InDesign or Photoshop or Premiere or Audition, or you can do all sorts of like cool creative things. So definitely check that out. Um, so what we're going to do in our studio here is I'm going to just run this chunk. It's going to load Tidyverse. It's going to load this hot dog contest winner's data, and it's going to make a plot called hot dogs or plot hot dogs, and it should spit out our plot. So here is a plot showing the number of hot dogs won or the number of hot dogs eaten during these hot dog eating contests and what constituted winning. And so to win in 2007, you had like the winner ate 65-ish hot dogs there. Um, so the main philosophy with kind of the regular way of exporting a graphic and enhancing it in Illustrator is you want to do as much work in R as possible to make it as clean as possible um, and as like to save you as much time. So if you want to highlight these bars to show when a new world record was made, you can technically do that in Illustrator. You would just select one of these bars and tell it to be filled with a color. But you have to remember which years that happens. And you're going to have to do that by hand, and you don't want to do that. So it's better to just do that in R and have it fill it. Um, and then if you want to change this color to something else in Illustrator, you can. Or you just make sure it's the right color for whatever design you're trying to do in R, and then you don't have to change anything in Illustrator, and it makes life easy. OK, so here's um, our basic plot. If you look through, you can see what each of these lines of code are going to do. Um, this is more fully annotated on the example page where I explain why it has this expand 0, 0 here that makes it so that this bar goes all the way to the edge of the plot instead of having kind of a little margin in between the, the axis line and the actual bar. And so I'll explain what all of these other things do. But what's important now is we need to get this plot hot dogs out of R into a separate file. And so to do that, um, we use ggsave to grab the, the, the PDF and or make a PDF of it. So let me grab the code for it because I don't want to type it. Um, so to save it, we're just going to say ggsave. We're going to save it as hotdogs.pdf. Um, in general, it's good practice to like make a separate folder in your project called output and then save all of the saved um, graphics there so it doesn't kind of clutter your main folder area. But for the sake of this, we'll just save it as hot dogs. It'll show up right here. Um, it's important that you use the Cairo PDF library. Um, that, even if you're not using custom fonts, it's a good idea to do this because if you're doing scatter plots, um, Technically, what R does behind the scenes, if you're not using the Cairo PDF library, is those are actually like font pieces. It's like little um, dots from a font that it's plotting on there. And that doesn't always embed well. And so sometimes if you export a plot from ggplot and it uses those points, when you open it in Illustrator, you'll get like missing font Xs and it won't work very well. Um, but if you export using Cairo, um, which does embed fonts well, um, then when you open it in Illustrator, all of the, the different pieces of the plot should look fine. Um, then you, we're going to specify it's going to be 7 inches wide, 4 inches tall, definitely inches. Um, for fun, I added background equals transparent. 
That way when it exports, instead of having a white background, when I put it in Illustrator, it won't have any background. And so in Illustrator, if I make like a big rectangle that is pink, and then I put the plot on top of it, um, it'll just be transparent and you'll see a pink background. Um, and so like it gives you more control over kind of where you can put this. It doesn't have the background built into it. Um, because again, the whole goal of this is to give us a whole bunch of vector pieces that we can then edit and improve and enhance and label and annotate in Illustrator without having to delete a whole bunch of stuff. So if we run this, we should get a PDF in our enhancing folder. There it is, there's hotdogs.pdf. If we come to the desktop, we can see it in the enhancing folder called hotdogs.pdf and it looks like that. If we want the dimensions to be different, maybe this is too tall, um, then you just go over to GG Save and instead of saying, what did I say, four inches tall, then switch it to three inches tall and it'll shrink it down. So you want to get this as accurate as possible and as like proportional and get it as, as close to being publication worthy as possible in R. Once we have it, so let's assume this is the right dimensions and that's what we care about, we can open this PDF in Illustrator. So I'm just gonna drag it onto this icon here and it should open up in Illustrator as a PDF file like that. So the nice thing about this now is if we, if we zoom in a little bit and hover over one of these bars, we can actually select the bar. And if we want to start lying with data, we can resize the bar. That's like really dangerous, so let's undo that. Um, but like we have total control over every plot element now. So if we want to grab this access line and get rid of it, it's gone. If we want to change the font of 1996 and make it pink, we can select the 1996 text and make it pink. Just like this, instead of being gray, let's make it purple. Now 1996 alone is purple. And so that's cool. So you can do all sorts of little things here. Um, what you're gonna be doing in your exercise is adding annotations, which are just text boxes. So if you come to the type tool and draw a box, it will put some placeholder text in there, but then you can type whatever you want. Blah, 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 blah. And if you want to make some of this bold, we can tell it to be, well, if we click on the character menu, we can switch it from regular to bold semi-condensed. And now we have that, and then we can make it be a different color. So now it is bold semi-condensed green. So that might be our title over here. Um, or we can have it be down here and we can draw a line. So if we come to right here, we can come to the line segment tool and just draw a line. So now it's pointing. We'll give it a little bit of a stroke so we can see it. So now we have a black line pointing at the bar there. Probably needs to be thinner. You want to follow the principles of crap to make sure it has good contrast repetition alignment proximity. But again, like, I'm doing all this manual annotation here. Um, if I ever need to edit something, like if I want to, if I want to shrink that and just have one of the columns be skinnier, I could do that, I guess. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but now I'm manipulating the data itself because these are all just pieces of a vector. Okay. Um, if I want to bring in an ex like a picture, like uh, one of the pictures of the winners, in Illustrator, you can go to File, um, and do, there should be a place, there it is. If you go to File, Place, you can place another image in here and then you can resize it so you can get a, a picture of somebody's head, shrink it down to be the same height as the text box, and then have an arrow pointing at, at different bars and draw different lines. And so that gives you like full control over where all of this text stuff goes, all the annotations go. If you want to change any of these colors, like if this year, 1991, was especially important, um, then we can like double click here and say instead of orange, let's make this one be purple. And so they're all orange except purple, which is purple for some reason, and we might want to include an annotation pointing at purple saying it's purple because something. So we can do whatever you want. Again, this is all up to you and your exercise, how you want to make this look. Um, if you have multiple plots, you can actually, um, if we drag another PDF in here, we can shrink it down. We can make a whole layout of plots here and then add our own titles, add our own captions, add whatever we want. When we're done, 
if you go to file export you can export it as a pdf and then it will include all of the text and all of the annotations and everything that you included as vector images as well which means the finished version of this will be infinitely resizable you can shrink it down you can blow it up put it on a billboard do whatever you want with it it will be huge or tiny um, if you need to export it as a PNG file, if you're publishing it on the internet, you can also do that from the export menu as well. So that's how you're going to export this as a PDF when you're done with it. If you're using Gravit Designer, um, you can also open PDFs in Gravit Designer. Um, this is the free freemium version of uh, or a, a similar thing to Excel or not Excel, Illustrator. Um, so if we tell it to open the hot dogs PDF, it will actually complain because it's not that great at opening PDFs from R. It will complain that one of the fonts is missing. And so if you say keep the fonts, sure. Or even if you say replace the fonts, it will still open. And here's all of the bars, like they're all editable. Just like in Illustrator, we can shrink this down if we want and, and actually change our data, which is probably bad. Let's shrink that down. Um, the issue though, is if there's any text in something that you exported from um, R, it will sometimes do it correctly. So these text labels are still aligned correctly. But if you look down here, um, this goes from 1980 to 2010, and we lost all the spacing there. It didn't import it very well, um, which stinks. So either you have to recreate this access label down at the, or all the access labels down at the bottom, and that's tedious, or you don't actually have to export your vectors from R as a PDF. You can export it as an SVG file, which is an alternative version of a, of a, of a, uh, of a vector format. So if we come back to our studio, um, instead of using ggsave, or in addition to using this ggsave, we'll copy it. We're going to make a file called hotdogs.svg. This doesn't use the Cairo library. This is just a regular SVG file. So now if we just run this, this is the same thing. We just told it to be an SVG file and to not use the PDF writer. It will create an SVG file right here in our enhancing folder. Once it gets around to it, there it is. So SVG right there, that will open in a web browser and it will show up just fine. Um, a modern web browser, so like Internet Explorer 6 or 7 from like the olden days, it can't handle these things, but modern browsers can show all of the vectors and stuff. But this is also editable in Illustrator or in Gravit Designer. And when we open that SVG file in Gravit Designer, which we can't drag because they don't let us, so let's close this tab. No, I don't want to save it. So in Gravit Designer, if I say open from computer, and I go to the enhancing folder, and choose the SVG hot dogs. And if I open that, it should open the vectors. And everything is lined up now, like the text is still there. You'll see this checkerboard pattern. That's just a sign that it is transparent, um, that we're just seeing nothing in the background. All of these bars are still there, everything's there, but we don't see any background. Um, if we want a background, we can either come back to our studio and take this background equals transparent off, so it has a white background. Or in Gravit Designer, we can draw a new rectangle and just kind of draw it over the whole thing. So it'll look like that. That's a nice gray rectangle. We can change the fill. If we use this menu here, we can make it kind of that color. Cool. It's on top of all of our plots, or the whole plot here, so we can't see anything. But if you look over on this side, we have a whole bunch of layers. And this is our current rectangle layer. We can actually rename this layer, I think, so that we can call it like background. So it's not just called a rectangle. Um, but we can also right click on it and say, um, arrange, send to back. And it should go to the back of all of the other layers. So now we have kind of this red background with the plot on top of it. Um, and, or we could just make the background white and it would be fine too. But again, everything here is fully editable. Um, all the vectors can be changed. You can add the same annotations here. You can draw arrows. You can do everything you, you need to to annotate this thing and enhance it um, directly here in Gravit Designer. Um, but again, 
nowadays with the power of ggtext and patchwork and these other things that let you do fancy things with ggplots you can actually skip lots of this work and not even need to use illustrator or graphic designer or any editing software um, and you can make most of your fancy plots directly in ggplot and then save that as a png or a pdf and then publish that and it should be good to go so for your exercise for today you can choose to either use illustrator or graphic designer or Inkscape is an open source version of Illustrator. It's free, it's kind of clunky, and it takes a while to get used to, and I hate using it mostly because I'm super familiar with Illustrator. But if you want to teach yourself Inkscape, go right ahead. It'll just take a lot longer because you have to get used to the, the weird interface they have. Um, Gravit Designer is great, it's free. Um, Illustrator is great for now because it's free if you're a GSU student. So have fun with your exercise and good luck.